this video I'm going to share with you a lot of tips and tricks and practices that I've built up over time. These practices have allowed me to be quite productive with my time when I'm drawing and when I'm animating. I have more time to do other things like work on my YouTube channel and my business and so I thought I would share some of these ideas with you today. This isn't a time management tutorial. I'm not interested in teaching how to suck all of the space out between tasks. That subject is very overdone and I'm not talking about ways to make you spend more time drawing either. So it's not about putting more hours into the drawing. I'm actually talking about that time when you do sit down to draw, making sure that that time is being used effectively. My first advice, no warm-up drawings. Focus on the goal of the task at hand. Make every drawing count towards that goal. Maybe your first drawing won't be as good as the other ones that come after it, but at least make that first drawing count for something. A lot of people who do warm-up drawings, they'll just draw something that has no relevance to anything. And so it's a throwaway drawing that they can't really use for anything. They might post it on social media, but with that drawing, you could have made a drawing that is relevant to your subject and posted it on social media and used it for your project. Let's say your project is an animation. Well, make some pre-production artwork instead of just drawing something random. So the other thing I advise is to think about art in terms of value. What is the value of a drawing? Does it communicate something? That could make it valuable if it communicates something. Is it helping you to work something out? That is value if it helps you to do that. Does it clarify? Does it provoke? Does it inform? There are different ways you can package artwork so that it's valuable. But seeing the value in a drawing will help you to reduce the amount of drawings which aren't valuable. You'll go towards what's valuable instead of just seeing a drawing as a drawing. Another way of looking at it could be that the drawing has purpose. It's for you to decide how important that purpose is. I think there's a better way of seeing drawings instead of seeing them as just like each drawing has an equal status. That's not true. My other thing is about thinking. Drawing without thinking is also a waste of time. So you need to spend time thinking. Of course, you should be thinking while you're drawing, but also before you're drawing, after you're drawing, like in the spaces when you're not drawing, just take the time to think about what you're doing. Then you're able to be more economic with your drawings because you actually, you put thought into each one. Of course, sometimes you need to draw in order to think, like drawing is, your thinking process so this is a bit of a weird one but uh, it's just something to think about like thinking is really important for this document your process another part of making every drawing count you can document your process and that's a way to make each drawing count for more and for everything you do in art to have extra value as like a byproduct you can document your process and that documentation has some value to it so you can be like me, you can download OBS and record your screen while you're drawing and then make that into something else, maybe make it into, if you're releasing an animation, make a behind the scenes video for it as well. It's a little bit of extra work, but really it's a byproduct of something that you've already spent time making. You could also take screenshots at different points in the production process and they can be used in social media. I don't typically do the whole screenshotting thing because stopping to take screenshots does take me out of the flow of making something but it is an optional thing that you can do. Once you've made an animation you can actually um, edit down the footage with something like Adobe Premiere and chop the footage into little micro content for social media platforms. It took you ages to make these animations, so you might as well get the maximum use out of them. Don't waste your time by not capitalizing on what you have already made. Finish your animations as well. Unfinished animations are a massive waste of potential. 
if the standard of the story and the, the standard of the main elements of the animation are fine and all it needs is just a little bit more work to make it presentable, finish it. Because otherwise, all of that work that you put in to get to that stage isn't being appreciated by anyone and that's wasted. Sometimes it's a much better choice to put time into working on something that's almost there instead of starting a new animation and leaving that one to gather dust. Don't reinvent the wheel. You should rarely need to start from nothing in a piece of artwork or an animation or in, in a drawing. In 99% of my YouTube thumbnails, I actually grab a sketch that I have already made and I edit it and improve it until it becomes a good thumbnail. Often these are from storyboard drafts that I didn't end up using or other pieces of pre-production artwork. I don't throw away those pieces that I didn't end up using, I keep them. So this brings me to my next point, which is to save all of your unused drawings. I would save as much of it as possible. They can become useful later on. I recommend just having a document dedicated to thrown out drawings where you can copy and paste drawings in. Maybe you had a whole sequence that you were going to include in your animation and you end up taking it out. There are some nice looking sketches in there, save them. It could be edited into a nice illustration later. If in one background you made a really nice field of grass, let's say, where you had painted individual blades and it looks great. The next time you need to paint a similar field of grass, just paste in the one you already had before. Tweak the colors a little bit, tweak the contrast, the lighting, and there you have a field of grass in much less time than if you had started from scratch. Ever since I learned basic photo manipulation skills in Photoshop, it has greatly helped me to be more efficient in the way I create visuals. So I highly recommend investing the time into learning basic photo manipulation skills. Uh, my next point is fail early whenever possible. The further ahead you get in the production process of an animation or in uh, a piece of concept art or something, the longer it takes to make changes. So. You really want to get the failures out the way first. Start off with thumbnail images, which maybe take five minutes each. That way, if you decide to throw one out at that stage, you've only lost five minutes of sketching time. You haven't lost like a half an hour speed paint before you got to the answer. So failing early is much more efficient than any late stage failures and, and U-turns. My next one is to just not be too proud to use reference. Use reference, guys. Develop the sensibility, of course, for knowing what is innocent use of reference and what is ripping something off. It's great if you can shoot your own reference whenever you can, and it's great to do on location reference. So if you need to draw a tiger, it would be great to actually go to a zoo and draw the tiger in real life. But of course, sometimes we don't have access to these things. So almost everyone has access to Google images. There are certain tricks to getting reference using Google images that just make it a little bit better, increase the quality of your references. For example, if I'm looking for a certain forest, like let's say I need a reference for a bamboo forest. I know that if you type into Google Images bamboo forest, you'll get a bunch of images. Some of them will be high quality, some of them won't be. But if you type into Google Images bamboo forest photography, that extra keyword automatically raises the average standard of all the images you will see in Google Images. So putting photography on the end, that's a quick tip you have there. You can try that and experiment with other keywords as well, and you'll find tricks like that to getting better reference. Work in batches. Do a big batch of concept sketches, do a big batch of storyboards, do a big batch of rendering. One thing which can take up so much time in an animation production is switching between tasks. 
So just spend one big block of time doing one specific thing and doing a lot of it. And that will save you a lot of change over time. You know the kind of time when you have to close down a software and open up a new software? You can avoid that quite a lot by just batching your processes. With all of this stuff, you should be able to kind of uh, get more bang for your buck with the time that you spend drawing. So what can you do with this extra spare time you've earned from this? Well, you can spend it doing whatever you want to do. If you're me, you will spend it doing more work and creating more cool things. Maybe you want to put this extra time you've earned towards learning a new skill or maybe you want to start up a small business maybe you want to start a youtube channel hey guys i just wanted to give you a few quick updates before you go uh, if you're submitting to the animator guild community showreel challenge today is your last day to enter so if you haven't yet put together a quick showreel you do that and submit it in the animator guild discord group submit it under challenge entries and then you'll be featured in the showcase and it's a really good way to get your work out there to get your name known in the community the community channel which is a separate channel from this it's launching next week so you can subscribe to it ahead of time so that you're notified when the new videos on the channel come out things like the challenge submissions that we've been doing on this channel they're now moving on to that channel also if you benefit from these videos please consider supporting the channel over on patreon patreon is a platform which allows you to pledge an amount of your choosing every two weeks and that allows me to make higher quality videos and it really allows me to just keep on making videos on this channel. In return you get uh, some special rewards, you get things like sound effects, extra extended videos on different tutorials and things and I'm soon going to be bringing out my custom TV paint brushes for you to download and use however you want. If any of them appeal to you, the link to my Patreon page will be in the description. Alright, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.